Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. So it was brought to my attention on episode 558 and 559 that the volume was really, really low. Of course, you guys know I'm using a new mic, so I know you understand, but I do need to fiddle around with it and see if it, uh, if I can make an improvement, basically. So please bear with me. Let me know in the comment section if it is indeed a little bit louder or if I need to keep working on it. I would really appreciate that. Okay, guys, enough of the jibber jabber. I got a great story, so let's get to it. Hi, Leslie. My name is Emilio, and I'm going to do my best to tell this story. It's funny that I'm even telling this story because I've spent so long trying not to even think of it, but the path I've chosen in life seems to have forced me to face this absolutely traumatizing fear dead in the face. When I was nine, I went to stay with my grandfather for the summer because my grandmother had passed away and he wanted some company. So I recall granddad lived in Clay County, Kentucky. But when I went to go visit him after the funeral, we drove to Leslie County to his old cabin in the mountains. Granddad didn't go there often because Grandma had so many health issues and it wasn't high on their list of must-dos. So you can imagine that it wasn't in the greatest shape when we first got there. Granddad stopped in to see some old-timers, as he called them, and they all agreed to stop in the next day to help do some repairs. I just stayed out of the way. To me, it was all the same. We did everything outside, so a hole in the roof didn't bother me none. Every now and again, I heard talk of this dog missing or that dog was found dead, and I was interested. But... Granddad would shoo me away and told the old-timers to watch what they said so as not to scare me. So as a nine-year-old kid, I bugged and I bugged for Granddad to tell me what they meant when they talked about these dead dogs. He finally relented and said that there was an old wife's tale that talked about mountain monsters who would come down looking for food and occasionally they would kill a dog or two. Sometimes the dogs disappeared, and sometimes they were just left for dead. Granddad didn't seem to put much stock in these stories, so I just let it be. So after the repairs were done, we went fishing every day for the first week. The weather was great. Even the mosquitoes were on vacation, Granddad said over and over. Around the tenth day, I'm guessing, we were back at the cabin making dinner when Granddad pinched his nose and said, Okay, we need to go down and take a dip at the pond after we eat. So, we got ourselves all ready for our swim slash bath, and we hit the trail. The pond was made from a freshwater spring that my grandfather made just for this purpose. It was bitter cold, but so refreshing. On our way to the pond, I noticed Granddad seemed to be getting more and more nervous. We were on the same twisty-turny path that we took every single day to go fishing, so I didn't understand what the problem was. I do recall there was a very bad smell in the air. Granddad and I just joked about it, being thankful that it wasn't us that smelled that bad. After about 20 minutes, we came to the pond. I was pretty shy, so I kept my underwear on, but Granddad got buck naked. He did a quick run and a cannonball right into the icy water. He screamed and squealed and tried to convince me it wasn't all that cold. But I went in, copying his squealing to a T. Then I felt Granddad squeeze my arm and whisper, shh, into my ear. That's when we heard a low and powerful growl. I said, it's a bear. I think it's a bear. And right at that moment, Granddad realized he hadn't brought his pistol. He whispered, let's get out and stay close behind me, okay? Let's stay good and calm. If it comes towards us, 
we have to raise our hands and scream as loud as we can and stay close together, okay? I nodded. Well, no sooner did we step out of the cold water when we noticed that all the trees around us were shaking, or so we thought. And that's when we forgot about our plan to stay calm, and we took off running. Granddad was in front, and I was close behind. Every few seconds, Granddad would look back over his shoulder to make sure I was still there, until he screamed, Oh my God, and then ran right into a tree. Then he fell backwards and started rolling down the hill. I felt something large and powerful right on my heels, so I stuck to the trail that I was familiar with, and then I did the same thing that Granddad did. I turned to look behind me, and wham, I hit the tree hard. I fell backwards, completely winded. I don't think I was unconscious, just terrified as I tried to catch my breath without alerting the bear, which is still what I thought it was. I was terrified that if it saw me breathing, it would eat me alive. I tried to keep my eyes closed as well. And finally, my breathing slowed and settled. I noticed that it was calm all around me, but I felt like I could hear a loud, deep breathing coming from nearby. So I cracked my eyes open, and oh my God, what I saw made me start crying and hyperventilate. This giant, hairy man was crouched down with its rear end resting on its heels and its hands were stopping him from falling forward. When I started crying, he turned his head and started looking at me as if he was confused. He also did a low growl, but not an angry sound, more of a comment. Then he leaned forward and he poked me in the side. I jumped up and I screamed, Please don't kill me. Then he grunted again and started down the path the way we had just come, and he stopped, turned around, and looked at me. I knew he wanted me to follow him. When we got to the spot where Grandad hit the tree and rolled down the hill, the big hairy man gave me a good shove to go and find my Grandad. I'm pretty sure. I looked behind me a couple of times, and he was still there looking at me. Finally, I saw my Grandad laying in a crumpled mess, and I slid the rest of the way down on my rear end. I could see Grandad had a huge lump on his forehead. I started listening for a heartbeat or breathing, and finally I felt he was breathing. I called to him and I shook him, but he wouldn't rouse. I looked and I could still see the giant up the hill looking down at us, and I screamed at him, This is your fault, you SOB. Yes, I called him an SOB. The first time I ever swore, LOL. Seconds later, he was standing beside me and I had no idea how he'd gotten there. I never heard a sound. I smelled him and I looked up and there he was. He grunted and pushed me aside. Please understand that he was not angry. He was just extremely powerful. He leaned down and he flipped Grandad up and onto his shoulders and he walked up the hill. It took me ten minutes holding on to branches and trees so I didn't fall. He did it in less than a minute, with no help except for one time I saw him fall forward, and he used his right hand to steady himself. When I finally got to the top, Grandad was laying there in the same shape, and the giant man was gone. I noticed that the sky had darkened a lot and the wind was really starting to blow. So I sat down by Grandad and I gently called him over and over. Finally, his eyes started to flutter and then he woke up. He slowly sat up and he looked around. I asked if he was well enough to start walking and he asked what happened. I just said that we'd better start walking and we'll talk at the cabin. Then it started to rain and was coming down hard. I grabbed Grandad by the hand and pulled him along as hard as I could, but also as gently as well. I will never forget at that moment how frail my grandfather felt. The man who had ran our family and would give his own life for us seemed almost feeble. Once back at the cabin, I made him a shot of bourbon, his choice of alcohol, 
and started to explain what I saw. Granddad shocked me by saying he also knew these giant men existed. In these parts, it's really no secret. He asked if I was hurt in any way, and I just cried. They were monsters, and monsters weren't real, I said. He hugged me and said, I know, I know, in an understanding voice. But did he hurt me in any other way? And I said, no. I added that, I guess, in a way, it seemed like he was compassionate towards me, almost helpful. But after all that, my world really was shook upside down. Granddad and I decided right there. We weren't going to discuss this any longer. Not the best decision, I can now admit. The best advice is to talk the crap out of it. But regardless, I forced it out of my mind. I decided to follow in my father's footsteps and become a police officer. One evening, my partner and I chased a bad guy into a heavily wooded area. Again, it was a very stormy evening, with wind and rain. We felt that the guy had to be in a broken-down cabin hiding out. He didn't know we were coming, so we had the upper hand. We made sure to be quiet as we neared the area, and all of a sudden my partner tapped me with his elbow and nodded in the direction he wanted me to look. I looked, and his flashlight was pointing at the back of a massive and very hairy being. Its back was approximately three and a half feet wide at the shoulders. Its long hair was black, and it was hunched over as if trying to hide from us. My partner said, Excuse me, sir? Then this mountain man stands up to its full height of at least eight feet tall, and then turns slowly to look right at us. It was only ten or fifteen feet away from us, and we were looking at its face. Its pure black eyes were the same size as a cow's eyes, and at first it looked directly at our guns and it sneered. It literally sneered. It knew what they were. Then it looked back at our faces, and it softened its gaze. We both realized it showed sadness, and then it walked away. I admitted to my partner that I had had another experience, and now there was no denying their existence. I knew that my partner was not going to stay in the job after that, and I knew I probably wouldn't either. I did, however, outlast him by six months, though. But the final straw for me was a call I got from an elderly lady who lived on a small parcel of land that she made into a home. A bunch of free-range chickens, ducks, quails, turkeys, and a couple of goats. I feel like there was more, but I don't recall exactly. She called and said she thought her chickens were disappearing. So she decided to do a quick count, and she had 22 chickens running around. Then the next night she had 18, and then the next night there was 15. And she thought she was missing a turkey and a guard goose. She said, though, now she knew for sure. She was so eccentric that I really didn't have to wonder. When I got the call, she was petrified. She said she saw these unbelievable creatures chasing her animals around. So I went out, and sure enough, there were footprints that didn't belong to her animals or herself. I asked if I could come by that night, as it was my night off, just to see what was happening with my own eyes. Well, that night I did go, and I did see something lurking around, but they weren't tall and hairy men. They were about three or four feet tall, alien-looking creatures skulking around. Once they each got something, they disappeared into the darkness. I advised her to lock up her animals at night. Free range meant nothing if they were being eaten. The next day, I gave my notice. I get it that there's a world out there that we really don't know about, but I prefer not to know about it. I give people like you a lot of credit. I don't believe you could do what you do and not believe. In my opinion, you're better off reading comic books. You're creating a disservice for this community, creating doubt 
and I don't like that. I don't like that for people that work hard like you do. I don't know if you noticed, Leslie, but all of this began in Leslie County. And when I heard that, I knew I had to give you my story. Anyways, thanks for listening, Emilio. Well, that was an amazing story, and I greatly appreciate you sending it in. Uh, You know I always need the stories, so if you've got them, send them in, guys. And before you move on, do me a favor and hit the like button, hit the bell for notifications, and subscribe. And don't forget, you know I love you. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here in a day or two. Bye for now.